Hello and welcome to Boxing Board. Now today we are going to do a flick through, unboxing slash review of Carbon 125 which is a cyberpunk RPG and this is the core rule book from Dragon Turtle Games. It's just come out on Kickstarter, I've just got my copy today and we're going to go through it. Now the first thing I say is the artwork is awesome, very stylized and very much its own beast. So let's have a look inside the game. Um, now it will look familiar to a lot of you the system because it uses a fairly well known system but let's just We'll go through it anyway. So it is a little bit of a funny layout in some respects, I find, but I forget that because it works. It seems to work really well. It seems to be I quite like it. So you get a bit about how to play um, the basics. Then we go through a lot about character creation. Um, really, the first chunk of the book um, and how that works. Then a little bit about adventuring, and that part two brings in things like adventuring and the economy. So living in the world then part three is combat and how that works part four is other rules and general rules for like saves and stuff like that and then part five is about the world itself then we've got a games master bit um in part six and we've got a, a sort of like a little mission um or two bits of missions in um at the end of the book along with character sheets etc so and um, basically um, what you need to know is kind of almost summed up in a picture um, you get a feel for it, the artwork is very very good and tells you a lot, There's, it gives you a real feel of what's going on in this world um, although it's called Carbon 2185 it is not the same as Altered Carbon um, so it's not that universe um, but you could adapt it to, to fit a whole lot of different cyberpunk universes I would imagine um, the system would work quite well but you don't need to do that because in its own right it's a really good, I think it's a really interesting world. So it's a bit about the slang at the start so you can get to help you a bit with the RPG, the role playing aspect of it. Then we get about the world and the world there are a number of things that stand out. First of all everybody has got some kind of cybernetic enhancement or augmentation um, even if it's just a neural link that you're given at birth so you can access banks and stuff or your money and stuff. Pollution is a big feature of this game um, and in and, and the background of the world so it, it features a lot governments have become small, mega corporations have become big um, which is common to a lot of the cyberpunk kind of games that you get um, gives it a true cyberpunk kind of flavour and if you like cyberpunk you're going to be familiar with that and that's kind of one of the big draws of it government does control things like law enforcement however um, and then the Weird, one of the weird mechanics of this is, I think, that you um, complete contracts that last five years and everybody is very, very, very poor, or the majority of people, except for 0.5% of the world's population, who control everything. The um, majority of the world's population work for five years in a contract. They're expected to work 10 hours a day, 30 days a month, and they get paid at the end of the contract. If they break the contract, they, sort of, they don't fulfill it, they get nothing. So... Um, it means that people are basically permanently in debt. So if you're looking at um, a form of, of indenture, so uh, it's it, it, common in different parts of the world, but it's spread all over the place and it's spread everywhere in this one. Then there's a bit of currency and stuff like that. So then we go into the basics. What do you need to play? Kind of normal stuff. A little bit about character enhancement. You're using a number of different dice, polyhedral dice will be me are mentioned throughout um, and then it goes a little bit about the steps to creating a character. Now this bit um, I think is one of the more rewarding aspects, it, it is, is a rewarding aspect of the game but you have to read it carefully and work it through. So it's, it, it's a little bit fiddly I, th I think at times, having said that it's no more fiddly than any other RPG unless it's one that's very user friendly in terms of creating character. And it kind of makes sense in its world the way it's done. You, there are rules for making it very random. There are rules for making it a bit more um, balanced for newer players. Um, you choose an origin. You choose you generate a vice, and vices are important. Uh, then you have got you apply your ability scores, and then it says generate a background and determine age. You can pursue a career um, before you become a cyberpunk. And a cyberpunk is somebody who basically has gone off the grid. And is living in their own world. So, an establishment rebel, which is what you are in this game. You can choose a class, um, calculate that's for your um, cyberpunk sort of side of your life, and then you calculate your skill mo modifiers and buy gear and choose a name. So, that kind of stuff. So, let's have a look at this. 
So the first bit is origins. Now there are a number of different origins available. Um, you've got Badlanders, these are people who live outside the cities in the extreme, uh, extreme pollution. Gutter punks who are kind of aimless youths. It says aimless youths clad in painted black leather, um, black painted leather jackets, faces full of metal piercings, um, and they they kind of are going back to the punk era in their approach, and they are off the grid a little bit. Corporate kids who are the exact opposite, um, and effectively what these are um, is a or people who've been brought up with a corporation. Um, Regular Joe, um, then you've got Synth, now these are people who are manufactured by um, they're effectively robotic life forms um, with biological bits to them as well. Then you've got Wormers, these are um, off world people, um, they're born in off world colonies, and that's your background. So, those are the ones that are available. Each one brings strengths, weaknesses, and implications for your life. So, for instance, your life, your age will matter in this game a little bit. At, at, at the beginning, like, why did you do an age? And then you realise it's to do with how many, how much time you've got to do your careers. Um, so you've got some interesting things that can happen here. The ageing process, they've got a little bit about it. And whenever you get old, there are some problems. Whenever you get middle aged, there's some, there's some issues and benefits as well. Uh, so there's some interesting bits and pieces that you can um, you can see. Um, there is a bit in this carbon regeneration. You can reduce the effects of aging using carbon regenerate rejuvenation. So this is a bit like, I suppose this is where the carbon the, the altered carbon comes in a little bit, but without the meth it's not the same as the Methuselahs and altered carbon. Language can play a bit in uh, can play a role, and you've got a bit about the different languages and the the general pop, uh, the most common languages in, in San Francisco, which is where this is based. Then we get into classes. Now, this is a bit that I find a bit odd the way the layout came in. Because this is whenever you're a cyberpunk. So I'm going to actually skip through that and um, we'll come back to that. Because once you've determined your, backgr your um, background, you can then look at contracts. And this to me is more logical if this was a bit was earlier. And this is your life before you were a cyberpunk. And these come in bundles of five. You have risks of injury in them. And you most of the system, um, a lot of system rules on, it, it, and this bit depends on the rules that you do. So you roll 2d6s and, and ha add half your intelligence modifier. And if the number is bigger than that, you're not injured. And you get the, the benefit of this. So you get the wage and you get a part and gift for each um, contract that you take in that particular role. Um, if you do four, you get a retirement payout as well, or um, for most of them, not for all of them, but for most of them. Uh, so this is your life before you're cyberpunk, and it starts at 18. So for instance, if you're, if you're 40, whenever you go cyberpunk, the chances are you've had four um, of these, you've had four contracts, they all last five years unless they're broken. Um, so you will have enough to get your, your um, retirement payout and you'll have got these different bits along with the wage uh, that's appropriate for each contract. Uh, you also will have some skills that you'll pick up along the way and there's a number of different ones. There's corporate drone, criminal, entertainer, um, explorer, uh, let's see. Labourer, law enforcement, merchant, military, and I think, no, uh, technician and unskilled worker. And some of these are more risky than others, but the payouts are less than others. So there's um, some benefits and weaknesses to them, and it's quite interesting. I think that's quite cool. Once you've done your background, you then you go cyberpunk, you go off the grid in effect and start to live a completely different life. So they're not normal people, they've got a class, sometimes called combat class, and their class defines much about them. And so you then pick out the class, and there's a number that are available. It's Dymo, um, Doc, Enforcer, Hacker, Investigator, and Scoundrel. And these all have got a, lot, a fair bit of detail about them, and, tell, and there's a lot that tells you about them. So you, at different levels you can start focus, 
So third level you can focus your dymo. Um, you can focus, I believe, um, your dog a little bit. Uh, yeah, you can choose speciality quite early on with them. Enforcers. And again, there's a number of different bits you can do. Second level, you can pick out what combat archetype you're going to have. Hacker. And there's choices throughout that again. Um, and at third level, you can choose your speciality. And investigator. I think that's the last. Oh, and scoundrel. So there's different, again, different ones that you can do all the way through, which is quite nice, actually. So character generation in this is... It's quite satisfying actually, I think. So then you get um, some other bits that you do for that. You pick out your vice or you can roll it. Okay, so, uh, and these vices you role play in. So it might be, for instance, I'm afraid of, of new cybernetic enhancements, which means you're not going to get, you're not going to get one. Uh, I regularly gamble in the legal synth dog fight, so that has to come up somewhere in the game. And the, these are, are quite important. Then you've got your bit about gear. You will have some money that you'll generate it in your um, in, in your um, earlier life, and you will have the ability to spend some of that money um, on equipment. And there's bits here about you know different weapons and what they do, and different amounts of damage, and that's where polyhedral dice seem to come in a bit more. And there's some special, uh, as per usual with games, there's you know, special rules that go with those. Um, then we get some attachments that you can do to your different weapons, different types of ammo that you can get, tools that you can get, just vehicles that you can use, and augmentations. Okay, so things that you can do to your body. So, so there's quite a lot going on here, and you can see that um, there's you know there's a lot of information, a lot of detail. One of the things I quite like about this movie, because I'm getting older, is that the the writing's quite big. Also, I know this is going to sound silly, but I think it's just a good point to bring it in. The 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 typeface they use is really clear. I think that I think it's superbly written for you know for people like myself who sometimes get overwhelmed with information on a page. This is a, a really manageable game. I think the way it's been laid out, I think it's very well laid out. Then there's a bit about adventuring and things like addiction feature on here. So there's drugs that can be used that have got benefits, and that, but they're addictive. And you have to think through in the game what impact that could have. Then there's a thing called influence and how that works. And a bit about what the different... Um, you can have influence within the corporate, you can have influence within the street. Um, time and resting, a bit about social interaction, how that works. And a bit about between missions and things like how much it will cost you per day. To, to survive. Speaking of costs, we get into the economy. A lot of detail about this. A lot of detail about how much things cost, what kind of money you're going to look at is be spending, um, and then we get into combat. And the combat um, will look familiar to people if you've played certain games. Let's just say that. Um, so there's the, there's uh, quite a lot about combat, and it, and it seems pretty tight. We system they've that the, um, which I. I quite like it's it's cool then we have um, rules and there's different bonuses you can get and different um, for abilities bit of passive checks and the rules themselves seem reasonably decent and straightforward I think uh, but this is a first glance through and um, flicking on and then we get into the world now the world details I I was a bit surprised this wasn't at the beginning because for me this is one of the big sell points of this game is that the world itself is interesting and rich and pretty cool. Um, so you got a bit about for some reason to put it halfway through the book. I would have put it at the start, but that's me. That's me. Um, I can understand the logic, but I think this would be to me that make more sense. So the world, we get a bit about climate collapse and then the implications, what happens as part of that. Um, and then we get a lot of different corporations. Now corporations are huge in this game. And there's a lot about them and what they do and how they're, you know, what they're, um, what they, what their, what their raison d'etre is, and you know what, what them, um, the way they work, the different corporations. Really useful for your GM to actually have an idea of that. Then there's also gangs. So you get the corporate world and then you get the street world. And the street world, the gangs are king. 
And in this, again, we get quite a lot of information about different types of games, the languages they speak, and things like that. Then we get into groups of interest. So these are things that are something where something different to that, somewhere in between. Um, so things like cults, etc. Um, political groups and tar patrol and stuff like that. And then we get into uh, a bit about what San Francisco itself is like. And the districts, there's I think it's five districts. And it tells you a bit about each district. Gives you a flavour of what it's like. And uh, then a bit about beyond the city. So what's it like in different parts. Um, then we get the brands. So these are part of everyday life um, that, are involved, that are in San Francisco. And um, which is quite nice. Again, building that that flavour of world. Really useful for your GM. We get a, some we get some random NPCs, um, which is quite nice and quite useful. Um, and then we get a random encounter generator, which I thought was quite cool. And these are based on districts. So these are uh, you roll um, a tw d20. It comes up with what it is, for instance, crime, and then you roll d20 again, and it tells you what, what it actually is. So the, there's um, different effects and different things that can happen. And they vary between um, the different areas, so it's not, just this, it's not just the same thing rehashed over and over again. They are different, um, which I th is a nice touch. And again, as a GM, it just means you've got something that you can use um, to help you develop ideas and things in the game. Which is kind of cool, kind of nice, um, and it, it's a, a good resource to have. There's a good set of resource there, um, which I, I thought was kind of handy and useful. And then we get a random mission generator again, giving you that that option for your GM. So you roll a d6 and then you roll a d two d6 to get the uh, missions for it. So slightly less different kinds of missions, but good sort of mission seeds that I think are quite quite nice and quite cool. We get a bit about traps um, and I'm not exactly sure what that is. Oh these are different types of characters that appear in it which is kind of nice. Ooh, I like that. And items of note. So there's good support here for your GM. Starting wealth, specified items and goods um, that you would have in different um, at different levels. So these are the things that, that uh, you can use for generating no for enemies in large groups and it tells you a bit about how to pick out um, the different groups and what to do with them as well so how to generate your your enemies so it comes down to a thing called challenge explains how to do that and gives you crucially I think different levels of uh, enemies and villains to f that you'll fight at the different challenge levels so I think there's eight different challenge levels and I think that's that's really nice. I, I, I like this. I um I think one of the things that, that struck me was what they ha they have thought, or oh, these are uh there's there's a whole set of different levels that you get with these, so that's quite quite cool. So one of the things I like about this is that you can see there there's there's wodges of them. Um I find how can I put this? Most people who buy a game, a, a game book are going to be GMing it, um, in my experience. And there's more than eight. There's seems a lot more than that. So it seems to be we're up to ten so far. Let's see. Ah, uh, ten. Eleven. Eleven different challenge groups. Most people are going to be GMing. And, and actually, the book needs to be GM friendly because that's who your, your market is. And um, this is very GM friendly. Um, so choice request is then a level one adventure um, for our for your characters. I won't go into too much of that, but it's quite short. It's quite fast. It's quite cool, and it's yeah, it, it fits well. And the third part is on their website, even as we speak. Then we've got sh the the necessary sheets as you always have in books, and you can download these as well. So. Overall, what do I think? Um, the layout is interesting. Um, the artwork is awesome. The world is really interesting. The layout, uh, um, there's some choices I would have made slightly different, but I understand why they've made them, so that's just personal taste. There's more than enough information there as a GM. The system itself seems to work, be 
more than workable and quite useful and quite you know, for a lot of players it's going to be something that they're more familiar with. Um, the the way that characters are developed, I think, is actually and is actually quite interesting and and lets you step into the world and lets you step into the particular flavour of cyberpunk that Carbon Two One Eight Five is. Um, so to me. I think this is a solid buy. Now it's not out yet, but it won't be too long. And I would recommend getting this. It's not as clunky as some of the other cyberpunk stuff that's out there. Um, it's basically quite a, a quite a, a good introduction into that world. I would go with it. I think it's worth a buy. I think it's a good book and well worth um, the investment. Um, but that's me. And uh, yeah, so. Thumbs up from me, definitely a thumbs up, and um, really rather good. If you want to check it out, keep an eye on dragonturtlegames.com and uh, keep an eye out for when, when it's released um, proper. Um, but very, very good and very, very interesting. Have a lovely evening, thank you for watching, and uh, as ever, please like, share, comment if you find that useful or interesting. Or you get anything, an opinion about any of the bits that I've said. Maybe I'm being too harsh in the, the order of things. Um, and uh, as ever, please, please subscribe. It makes life so much more fun whenever there's a big community of us. And uh, I'm desperate to break out 500 subs at the minute. We're up to about four, we're around the 400 plus mark. So it'd be nice to get up to 500 and keep building. Um, but there we go. Thank you for watching and have a great evening. Bye-bye.